Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Back with us on the program, acclaimed writer Clem Masloff. Clem has been involved with science fiction and speculative literature since he taught himself to read in 1941, 1942. He served in the Army as a linguist and translator in four Balkan Slavic languages. For several decades, he taught sociology in Ohio after graduate research in Russian social history. Since retiring, he's returned to his dreams of the early 1940s, that being writing science fiction. Among his books, Light Up the Valley, Psychographia, Diploids, Galactic Mines, Trees Unlimited, Mining the Mineral Mountains, the book we discussed on Clem's last visit, and the book we'll talk about on today's show, The Amphibians. Author Clem Masloff with us on This Week in America. Clem, it is a pleasure to have you back with us. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, thank you. It is always fun. I love your creative mind and as I'm getting ready for this and remembering that uh, you had this fascination early in your life with science fiction. You went off and you, you did the military, as I talked about. You did the teaching. How were you able to stifle this creative mind? I'm, I'm surprised you weren't writing stories all of these years. Did you keep notes as you were going through that period of your life? I sort of, yeah. It's sort of in the back of my mind to a great extent. My best friend was a guy that was a writer, and he was a poet. He was teaching poetry. And and one day he told me, you could be a better writer than me. And I <laughs> said, no, that's impossible. He said, try it, try it. You could do better than me. By now he's passed away. But I, I sort of started a hobby of writing. I went to one of his classes, and I started writing this, started writing that. And eventually it accumulates. And by just trying things, you can learn how to do things a little bit. I'm still learning how to do things so in, in the writing field. But with all the success you've had, it's, it's interesting that, that you say that. By the way, you'll find Clem's books at Amazon.com. Information as well at BookVenture.com in the bookstore. You can link on to those. And uh, the blog site that Clem has by going to our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us. What's really fascinating with your books is you create not only characters, but a, a real world. Let's talk about in Amphibiots and Amphibiots. And I was asking about that because I couldn't find a pronunciation. Basically, this is, this is what, a whole species, a whole group that you created for this book. Yes, I try to think of a country where everything was based on water, rivers and streams and ponds everywhere, and things in the water, frogs and salamanders and mosquitoes everywhere. And I try to think, what would life be like for those people? What would they think? What would they believe? And uh, how would they live? And that's sort of, I try to think, of what would I like to read about these people? And I think that's often the best uh, for a motive for me is, what would I like to read myself if I picked up a book, regardless of who wrote it, about that subject? So I try to do that, try to please myself as a reader, because I've been a reader all my life. Well, that's interesting because so many times you feel the author is trying to talk over my head, and sometimes you talk to authors and it's like, there's no passion in their writing. I don't sense this is really something they would read if they hadn't written it themselves and they still might not have read it. And you say that's sort of your litmus test. If, if it's something you'll enjoy, you figure everybody else who's involved in science fiction and good writing will, will enjoy it as well. Yes, and I try to, to get in touch with readers, people that have read my works, and sometimes they see things in there that I did not see. Or they tell me, oh, I had to look up something in the dictionary. Oh, I better not. I tell myself I better avoid such words. If I turn, even English majors, I sometimes I, I make them go to the dictionary to find out a certain word that I was using there. So I try to learn from my readers that way, too. And then by direct contact with readers is often very, one of the most important things, I think, in writing. Find out what they see, the things that I don't see, and the things I, I wrote. With us on the program, Kim Masloff back. Uh, the, the book we're talking about, the new one, The Amphibiots. Uh, let's talk a little bit. I think you touched on it there. Some of the, the thought process, if, as you sat to, to write this book and, and created this world, what all were you thinking? And besides a great story, there are some good lessons in there, uh, subtle lessons in, in there as well as we, we read the book. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a character. He's called Aranid, Aranid Rolius. And he starts as a very scholarly person, as a young person, always trying to find out about his cult. He belongs to the Salamander cult, and trying to find out how it began, how its uh, founder uh, wrote down, got ideas. And I 
found him finally going as a librarian, as an archivist, and going into records of his cult and finding things that surprised him, things that uh, sort of scandalized him, and how this got him in trouble with the leaders of his salamander cult, and how he discovered there was a secret group in control as the higher-ups of it, and they had completely different ideas from the ordinary members, and they had completely different uh, way of doing things. And so he uh, sort of became very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, negative about the, the group. Yes. He, he was discovered as a, as a troublemaker within the group, and he finally he left, and he wandered across the country. And gradually he got members of the other cult, of the uh, frog cult, and he got to learn, got to know them, and got to find out about their beliefs, and actually was con- converted into their group, and eventually went to a community where their teachings went on and where they had their most important organization. And there he found another group that was not making trouble, a group of mystics, a group of people who thought they had greater spiritual knowledge and thought of themselves as very, very sanctified and were trying to take over the entire group. And he fought them at the uh, community of the uh, frog people, frog cult. And so it goes on and on, and then he finds himself being romantically inclined to the daughter of the leader of the frog people. And as a result of that, then, he more or less uh, defeats the uh, rebellious uh, mystics and controls and brings control back to the group. But he becomes then a conjoiner because he is linked romantically to a person of the opposite cult. He is able to have the idea then of conjoining the two cults of combining the best in both of them and trying to avoid the uh, things that are bad in one and the bad in the other one as well. And so that's the thing that finally ends up. He's no longer just a scholarly thinker, but he's a practical operator. And he figures out a way at a convention of all these groups together at the capital city of getting them to join together, of unifying them, of bringing them together. And uh, that is more or less the entire story of how this person develops, learns more about what is uh, what he believes in and what he learns about, and finally is reshaped into a person who's a practical leader and a practical operator, and even a strategist in bringing about these changes, a change in both groups that he belonged yes. to, and finding that he could reform his own group and the other group, the opposite group, at the same time by combining them and bringing them together. And it's interesting how he gets to that point by the end of the book, and it's a story that uh, that brings out sometimes people aren't who they appear, sometimes groups aren't who they appear. It's a story of splits and decisions and uncertainty. It's a it's a fascinating story. The book we're talking about is The Amphibiots, and it's available at Amazon, bookventure.com in the bookstore. You can link on to those sites by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and that's A M P H I. B-I-O-T-S. Clem Masloff, M-A-S-L-O-F-F, is the uh, is the author. When you're doing something like this, how much research do you do before you sit down and 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 follow through with the story? It's, uh, it's an interesting thing to do research in an area you're not familiar with. Uh, yes. And I get much more material than I'll ever use, much more than I'll ever, you know, put into any part of the story, but it helps to draw in an interest, too, by the reader. And the reader can come in from the outside to the inside. How all these outside uh, forces and outside influences around the character, around the the hero, influence the inside thinking and the uh, more or less uh, internal, subjective part of that person and influences him. So that's why I try to draw a parallel between the characters and the uh, environment, between the inside of the person, the personality, and also what goes on around them. And I find out, you know, in um, these different uh, spiritual cults that are rivals, there are people with the same problems in both groups, and there are evil influences in both of the groups, too, I find out. So I try to get some kind of a lesson out of it, and I try to show the lessons learned by the uh, hero in the course of his experiences here and what goes on. You've been... uh, I try to get as close to life as I can 
it's not a realistic novel. And I'm not using real people right. in a real city or real people, a real country. But I try to get some lesson and some type of development of the person over the years as they go through this and that experience. Yet yeah, with the, the circumstances, with the uh, with the characters in the book, there is this relatable realism that uh, that you have in your books. Clem Masloff, our guest on the program, you've written so many captivating uh, science fiction novels. What makes a good science fiction novel? Is there a sort of a, a formula, things that you want to hit on, to check on, or is it a pretty broadly defined category? Well, there are many different you know kinds of science fiction. But I think it was Asimov who always emphasized the fact that there's something to wonder at, something to be startled with. There's always some surprise. And so looking for the unknown is probably part of what goes on in science fiction. Because you have even individuals, you have human beings there, and they're not too different from the people we see every day and the people around us. But in these new areas, we learn more, we see more, we have a new angle on them and what they think that we don't have every day by just going through life and just meeting people every day, the people we know, the people are strangers day by day. We see them in a new surroundings, and that way it's a little bit more interesting than what goes on just every day. So it's not too much different. Like, you know, this was the day of the, the era of Shakespeare or ancient times, and the people have changed some, but not that much, in which it's just the, the surroundings that are more interesting because they're, uh, they're different. Because I've written some uh, certain works that are in ancient times, where I have ancient Egyptians and ancient Greeks, and I have them doing things that they didn't actually do, but things that we can think of today in the 21st century that they were doing. And uh, that's one of the places. Take people outside their everyday life, take them way far away somewhere where they can see something different. That's what they think, that uh, modern literature all of a sudden it's going back to the old types of fables, of lands you never saw, of countries you never traveled to, and sort of like a travel guide. And that's what science fiction is a way, a, a guide to new lands or papers, places of the mind or imaginary surroundings that are much more interesting than, say, everyday life. And therefore, you can see what people do every day in these new areas in these new surroundings. Does I, that make sense? It or, makes, that, yes, it makes perfect passion. sense. And I love your enthusiasm, the passion for what you're doing. I get the impression uh -huh. you're having as much fun in writing and putting, constructing these stories as we are in reading them. This sounds like a lot of fun for you and something that's, that's really not work. It's something you probably get up looking forward to, uh, uh, to writing that day. That is, that's the truth. That's the truth about it. Because science fiction is a lot like what was one time considered uh, just travel literature, travel, going here, going there, uh, yes. meeting people that are very different in many ways, but very similar in basic ways here and there in different places. And that's what I try to do in this literature, try to both have the familiar in the people, but also the unfamiliar around them and in uh, their everyday experiences that go on. When you get on a roll, when you have an idea, and Febiots is, is what we're talking about, the new book by, by Clem Masloff, when you get this idea and it's turning and you're creating this world and you've got your story going, how difficult is to turn that to turn it off at the end of the day? I get the impression your mind is probably racing 24 hours a day, focused oh, yeah. on the storyline. This has happened to me. Sometimes I wake up in bed and I thought I was at a, compu uh, at a computer. I dreamed <laughs> I was at the computer working on it, and I get up and I write down what I was thinking at that time, and that's often the most valuable thing all day that I get down to put into a book, thing I dreamt of, I dreamt I was putting down on, uh, on my uh, blog here on my computer. So uh, dreams do come in, and if you dream about a, uh, when you have a problem, some, this has happened to me, I go at the uh, end of a whole day, I just can't solve a problem, I go to bed, I wake up, same time, three or four in the morning, and I have the answer. And there was no problem to it. It was, it was just something I wasn't looking at at the right perspective 
in the right direction. Ah, and now interesting. a little sleep and a little dreaming does help solve that. So, yeah, sometimes we can force it and, and we think we can and we can and sort of stepping back a little bit. In this case, K, uh, sleeping will, will help you put that into, into, into focus. I mentioned all the books there, and I probably left out one or two along the way. You've had so many that are available at Amazon, uh, bookventure.com, and the bookstore. What are you working on now? What books uh, can we expect to see and read soon? Well, I just finished one back in the, in the uh, old times, in ancient times. Uh, what the the uh, Greek philosopher considered the father of all science, Thales, Thales, uh, Th- Thales of Mileto, the great thinker, the great scientist back in ancient times. I see him go to Egypt, and he uh, creates a person there with the help of the Greek, of the Egyptian priests and the Greek uh, artisans, and he provides, he produ- produces a synthetic human being. But the synthetic human being is different from anybody around that ever existed before because a person can travel through time, and the person can also read minds and is telegenic too. So it's a fantastic idea, but I put it in ancient times where these unfamiliar things can happen, perhaps. That's one of the things I was working on, trying to get to now reorganize it and rewriting it into something more acceptable. Well, looking for all kinds of ideas like that can happen. Just throw uh, people in, into the far future, uh, yeah. the far past, or here, or there, far part of the world that the that reading public has never really been interested in. And you get some new ideas, a little bit wonder too, a little surprise too. Well, yeah, and it's sometimes nice to escape and go to another world and get out of this one for a yeah, while, as, as chaotic as, as this become. I mentioned the, uh, the the blog site, and it's long, and I, 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 it's probably best if I just put that in print, and we'll have that on our, our website. If you go to thisweekinamerica.us, and you see the information there for uh, for Clem, you'll be able to link directly on to, to WordPress. And these are, what, some unpublished books that you have on there? Oh, there are a lot of short stories. I began yeah. with short stories. They're easier and take, to, you know what, uh, get a feedback right away from short stories. So I have a couple hundred short stories there on Ogledalo, O-G-L-E-D-A-L-O-S-F. Uh, that's my, uh, yes. my blog. Yes. And that's a dot .wordpress.com, and we'll have Word, that on. My WordPress, uh-huh. Yeah, and we'll have all of that, so you'll be able to go there and uh, enjoy yourself at reading. And once you get started, you'll find yourself spending hours at the computer looking at what uh, what, oh, yeah. Cl- what Clem has written. A couple of minutes left in the program. I'm fascinated by your background with the, uh, the Balkan Slavic languages uh, dealing in Russian social history. I get the impression all of that is sort of a, a foundation, part of your, your toolbox as you write. And, and contemplate storylines, influenced by your past, I'm assuming, quite a bit. Yes. I've been very interested in uh, the Balkan folklore and the many, many themes there in the folklore that I can use. And I went back to the place where my father was born, and it's a lake, and I have mermaids coming out of the water. It's an old, firm, it's an <laughs> old uh, type of uh, folklore tale of mermaids in the lake. And I, just, I find things like that that, you know, were considered unimportant, but can be put into literature and put into some book in the future. So there's all kinds of interests like that. Folklore, legends, old stories, old po- poems and things that exist. Well, I love the worlds you create for us, the worlds you take us to. The new world is created in the book, The Amphibiots, that's A-M-P-H-I-B-I-O-T-S. Clem Masloff, the author, that's M-A-S-L-O-F-F. Books are available not only in Thibiats, uh, but but also uh, all of the books at Amazon. You'll find the books at bo- uh, bookstore.com, uh, bookventure.com in the bookstore. Barnes & Noble as well, and you can link on to all of that and his, uh, his blog site by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Clem, it is always a pleasure. I really enjoy your work. Hit another home run with Amphibiats. Uh, thank you so much for being with us on the program once again. Always fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, bro. It I is, enjoyed it a lot. It is okay. our pleasure, and you'll find uh, Clem and all of his books available at bookventure.com. You're listening to This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back after these messages. <laughs> 